Welcome to Electra Online. Triple integrals always are somewhat mysterious and finding the limits of integration can be quite challenging. So we're going to show you a number of examples to kind of get used to the idea and try to explain how to derive those limits of integration. But let's first look at the general approach and here we are dealing with rectangular coordinates so x y and z and we have a general approach now the general approach is as follows we're going to have a triple integral sometimes of some function times dv sometimes there is no function here we just replace it with one and it's simply the triple integral of dv and that means we're simply finding the volume but we could also find the moment of inertia we could find the uh, the mass, we could find the density, we could find different kinds of things and in that case we will have some sort of function which depends on x, y and z. And again we'll show you some examples of that as well. But if we simply have, uh, well and, and what I could do of course I can also put in here the function of x, y and z uh, because I want to stay consistent of course and uh, that means we're going to take whatever that function is it could be just a one could be whatever function uh, uh, so function of x y and z and then we're going to multiply that times dv that's a volume element which is simply the product of dz dy and dx now the order can be interchanged usually the order in which we're going to integrate depends upon what makes it what gives us the easiest integrals to integrate so it's typically the way we determine that. But in the general sense, we start with dz, then we integrate over y, and then we integrate over x like this. So your first integral would be this integral right here. And that would mean that we're going to integrate over z. That also means that x and y are not considered as constants. So when you integrate over z, x and y are just like constants. You don't change them, they're just like numbers. And the limits are going to be functions of x and y. So the lower limit and the upper limit are going to be some sort of function of x and y. No, there's no z in that. Once you integrate that, and of course when you integrate over dz, you end up with some expression that has a z in it. Then when you plug in the upper and lower limits, since those are only functions of x and y, the z disappears and now you have an equation or an expression that only has x and y as variables. So now you're going to integrate a second time. You take your second integral, let's say we're going to integrate over y, the variable y. That means that you're going to keep x as a constant and y is now your variable. Your limits again are going to be functions, but in this case they're only functions of x, not of y. So then we end up with, after the second integral, you end up with some expression with the variable y. When you plug in these limits, notice that y disappears and now you have an expression only of the variable x. Then the third integral, now you're going to integrate over x. And when you do that, you get some expression in terms of x. And then typically the limits will be constants. You're going to integrate from a to b. So the third integral typically has constants as its limit. The first integral usually has functions of the other two variables and you get constant as limits. The second integral is going to be the uh, function of the variable that you kept constant in the second integral. So that's kind of the general approach of how we deal with triple integrals. And yes, sometimes we do have a function there, and sometimes we only are finding the volume. So if this function isn't there, we play that just with one, one time dv, then we're finding the volume of something. But if there's a function here, that means we could be finding the mass or the density or something else like that, the charge distribution, whatever it may be, because that now has some function of the three variables multiplied times dv. So that's the difference between those two approaches. But this is it, that's how we typically do it in Cartesian or in rectangular coordinates. And now let's go show you some examples of how to actually apply that. And again, we need to pay, take special attention, bring special attention to how to find those particular limits of integration, because that's usually the hardest part of doing triple integrals.